In order to uh, start my story, I need to take you back in time. I need to take you back to 1952. Uh, a place called the Col de Glibier, excuse my pronunciation, uh, a mountain pass in the French Alps, home to a grueling stage of the Tour de France bike race, and home to an iconic moment in sport. Now, I'd like you to meet Fausto Coppi and Gino Batali, two uh, legendary Italian road cyclists, and they had a, a fierce rivalry that spanned well over a decade. Here they are, captured in the heat of battle during that epic 20-kilometer uh, hill climb. But this, this photograph captures something more than the race. It captures something more poignant. It captures a rare moment where two fierce rivals uh, were united, united by a simple gesture, the passing of a water bottle. And that water bottle came to symbolize not just their uh, intimate rivalry, but also their friendship and their respect for one another. And it was this photograph that got me hooked on the golden era of cycling and drew my attention to the humble bicycle bottle. Now, back in the day, this very simple uh, metal flask would have been filled with milk and sugar for energy, uh, an early version of a Red Bull. Sometimes it would have been filled with wine, uh, as you can see here the performance enhancer of the day. <laughs> and sometimes it would have been followed by uh, a celebratory cigarette. <laughs> Love this picture. Um, so I was really intrigued by this, this weird and wacky world of cycling. Uh, the rivalries, the races, the characters, uh, the camaraderie. So I decided to immerse myself in it a little more. And I entered a nostalgic new world. I started to attend uh, vintage bike festivals and bike race, races. I started to uh, document my newfound obsession with the bottle. Uh, all different shapes and sizes, all with different owners, uh, all who had a different story to tell. And around this time, I started to dress very, very strangely as well. So this is me actually taking part in a bike ride called Leroyka. Uh, it's 100 miles, and you do it on a heavy uh, vintage steel bike, and you do it wearing uh, questionable period clothing. Uh, this actually took place in California, and if you haven't ever ridden 100 miles in 100 degree heat in a pair of very thick wool shorts, uh, I really wouldn't recommend it. But I noticed something about my, my fellow cyclists during these events, and that was a shared obsession. They shared my, my passion for this most simple of products. I noticed a couple of things. I noticed that they were going onto eBay, and they were spending hundreds of pounds on originals from the 1940s, the 1950s. Or they were going to great lengths and getting very creative in turning a new bottle into an old bottle. As you can see here, this guy had garden twine, cork, and an industrial sander. But no one was remaking them in the spirit of the originals, and this is what intrigued me. So, I enlisted the help of a friend, and we began to uh, trace the roots of some of the original bottle makers from the 40s. And there was one, one bottle, and one company in particular that we were drawn to. It was made in England, up in Birmingham, uh, it existed in the late 1940s, faded out in the early 50s, we assume when plastic bottles became popular. <clears throat> in my opinion, it was the most elegant of the designs, the most beautiful, and it was the bottle that featured in all those black and white photographs. The company I'm talking about, the bottle I'm talking about, is called Coloral. It might not be a name that uh, anyone here is familiar with, but it has something of a, of a cult following within cycling. And our adventure took us from the British Library to a company's house, and we couldn't trace any lines of ownership, and we spent over a year trying. And we decided to take a leap of faith, and we bought Coloral. 
that sounds much grander than it is in reality. It involved buying the name, the trademark, the intellectual property. But in effect, we became uh, custodians of this great brand. And then we had to decide, what do we do next? What do we want the new Coloral to be? What do we want it to stand for? So we set about defining our purpose. We knew that we didn't uh, want to make another replica or a souvenir. They were already out there. We wanted to make uh, a bottle that functioned, but was as faithful in design as the original. And we knew that we wanted it to stand for something more, a purpose, a cause. And for us, the obvious choice was the issue of plastic pollution. Uh, for those that don't know, 8 million tons of plastic are discarded every year around the world, uh, polluting land, rivers, oceans. And that's enough plastic to circle the Earth four times, and is a huge amount of overconsumption and a tiny fraction of recycling. So as well as being advocates for this cause, we committed to eliminating all plastic, not just from the product itself, but the packaging as well. So no plastic washers, no plastic linings, no plastic bags. And I want Coloral, albeit only in a small way, to really help address this issue. Now, as well as wanting the bottle to live forever, we needed it to function. So we kind of moved into the, the design phase of our project. We started to draw and sketch, and we started to do computer animated diagrams. Uh, we even did a 3D printed prototype at one stage. Um, and we were really exploring the upgrades that we could make. And we decided on three. First of all, we wanted to upgrade the material from aluminium that would have been used in the past uh, to a food grade stainless steel, which would be considered much more health conscious for today. Second, we wanted to do two things that almost contradicted each other. One, we wanted to make it lighter. But at the same time, we wanted to add insulation. We wanted it to be able to keep liquids hot as well as cold. And then the last one was we tweaked the dimensions, the specification, um, so that it would fit onto every bike within every bottle cage and not require any special fitting that the original would have needed. So next phase, how did we move from a design project to a real product? How do we make this a reality? So we became experts in a process called steel spinning, which is the process used to form metal bottles. And we also became experts in receiving rejection letters from factories. <laughs> UK, Europe, Asia, another year went past of rejection. Um, and they all said the same thing in terms of too complicated, not enough volume, uh, too expensive. But there was one ray of light, one factory uh, entertained the idea, and they gave us a costing, uh, albeit an astronomical one. But really, it was our only choice. We'd spent a long time looking for a, for a partner. Um, we took that calculation and that, that costing, and we decided to set about trying to raise the necessary funds to move into production. So we launched a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter that I'm sure everyone's familiar with. And it went really well to start with. Uh, it got lots of attention. Um, lots of people wrote about it, particularly within uh, the cycling world that you'd expect. But also, it started to pop up in uh, design, homeware, and, and fashion, even, even G GQ magazine at one point, which was really cool. A particular highlight for me as a, as a sports fan and a cycling fan was seeing some professional cyclists uh, hear about the project and throw their weight of support behind the project. And this is a, a real favorite from uh, the British cyclist Victoria Pendleton on Twitter. But alas, we fell short. Um, we didn't reach our target. And we proved out a couple of theories. One was the pricing was too expensive. Um, and overall, our, our target, our funding target, was just too ambitious. But huge amount of awareness, and it felt like there was a huge amount of goodwill, from the, certainly from the cycling community, to see us get this bottle made. And then something really cool started to happen. Before we had too long to wallow in our Kickstarter failure, um, people who had heard about the project started to contact us. We got calls and emails um, from people that just wanted to be part of our adventure, wanted to help us make it a reality. Retailers. Uh, factories and brands uh, came to us, asked how they could help. 
one brand in particular um, came to us and said, let's make this bottle together, let's do it in partnership. And this, at this point, this was like a dream come true, a really prestigious brand, very exciting. We moved into the design phase and we started to kind of um, work together, share our thoughts and ideas. It was all going quite swimmingly um, until the final design came back. And our name had been completely removed from the product. And we had, a, I guess, a rude awakening at this stage. And we had to remind ourselves why we got into this project in the first place. And it was for simple reasons. It was to tell the coloral story. It was to make the bottle better than it was before. And it was to have it serve a purpose. And we realized that that wasn't going to be possible in partnership with somebody else. So we decided to break away and follow our own path a really difficult decision to make, because like I said, it was a prestigious brand and it was the only order that we had on the table, um, but it felt like it wasn't the right step for us. And then came our tipping point. So three things happened in kind of short succession around the same time that we decided to go our own way. First, people started to pre-order the bottle from us on our own website. An amazing factory reached out to us, a specialist in stainless steel manufacture, and they said that they would be flexible with us, they would kind of relax their usual terms and commitments to help make it a reality. And then individuals within the cycling world, but also friends and family, all started to contribute the necessary funds that we could use to pay for tooling and pay for the first run of bottles. So, that brings us up to date. This is, spans five years. Uh, as of three weeks ago, I'm very pleased to be able to say that we are actually now making the bottles. They're in production. Uh, 3,000 bottles, to be precise. Coming to a store near you soon. Um, and it's been, it's been an amazing journey. It's definitely been more of a, a hill climb than a sprint. Um, but we've learned a lot along the way. And I do think the hardship will be worth it. I think the finished product will make both Fausto and Gino proud. And rather fittingly, next year uh, is the 70th anniversary of the original Coloral Company, and I can't think of a, a better time to put it back where it belongs, which is back on the bicycle. Thank you very much.